Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to continue our Kato project that we started uh, yesterday. We're going to add some Rabbit MQ uh, functionality. We are going to, when we start up, then we're going to initialize our Rabbit MQ server with uh, an exchange and with a queue. And then we are going to set up so every time we post a spaceship to our uh, backend, then we will actually add the spaceship to our Rabbit MQ uh, exchange. And then the, the, the message will then be routed to the queue. So uh, let us just get started. Um, I have uh, prepared a little bit to tonight. I have created a Docker Compose file. And that, uh, that was just so then we have a Rabbit uh, MQ up and running very fast. And I've exposed these ports right here so I can access the administration module. And that is this port right here. And the other port that is so uh, or, or the, the Kata application can actually uh, communicate to the API, to the, uh, yeah, to the Rabbit MQ API. Um, yeah, then I've set it. I've, I've placed it on its own network. I've set external to false. That means that then uh, Docker Compose will actually create and delete this uh, network whenever it starts or stops. Uh, we actually don't need the network right now. It was just for later use. If if maybe we we want to still spin up multiple uh, Docker containers, then they can talk together if they're all on this uh, network that I just invented right there. So one Docker Compose file. That is what I prepared, and I also added a dependency. A magic dependency right here. This is the, the Rabbit MQ dependency, client version for 5.8.0. And uh, if you ask where where did I get this from, uh, then I actually looked it up on the rabbitmq.com slash API guide. It was actually the page before. Let me just go back once. It was actually on javaclient.html. Here we have the dependency that is needed and the documentation on Rabbit MQ. It is excellent. So when if you find this page right here, then you can uh, then you can also find the, the, the API guide is which is right there, and this is actually what we're going to follow tonight. We're going to uh, let me just uh, yeah, let me just zoom in a little bit. So we're we're actually going to fight the uh, so follow the um, the API guide. So we are going to first we're going to create a connection factory like this, and then we're going to create a uh, then we're going to create a channel, a new channel like that. And we are going to remember to to close the channel and also to close the connection. That is very important. Uh, and we are also then we are going to exchange to declare an exchange, like that. And we are going to uh, to, ex to to declare a queue and then we are going to bind the exchange and the queue together, just like they are doing here. O almost like they are doing here. We are doing it a little bit different, but uh, yeah, let me show you that. <coughs> So let's get started. So first of all, we have the dependency right there. Um, we have a, a, Kata, a Kotlin Kata application right here, and we uh, placed the, all of our codes in a separate file, and we extended the routing class with a method named spaceship yesterday. Let us just go and look at that. Here we have the code for that. That means that we created uh, uh, three different endpoints, one that could give us JSON, one that could give us some uh, text, and one some that could actually, where we could post new spaceships to. And then we could, uh, yeah. Uh, and this is the one we want to edit tonight. We want to make sure that whenever we are posting a new spaceship, then we're adding this as a message to our uh, RabbitMQ exchange. But first of all, let us start the RabbitMQ exchange. I'm in the right directory, so I'll write dog compose up right here in my terminal. I'm using Greg so that I can just press F12, then I get the terminal open or closed. F12, 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 as you can see right there. And now the RabbitMQ has started. So I'm actually very happy. I'm going to close the terminal again by pressing F12 once again. So now we have a RabbitMQ. Let us go, to, let me open up a browser and let me refresh the management, uh, uh, the, the management uh, URL is localhost15672, and the username password is guest guest if you haven't changed the default uh, setup for the RabbitMQ uh, Docker image or Docker container. So let us look at the exchanges. We have all of the default exchanges. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, so we have we have all the default exchanges. We have no, none, uh, no custom, and we have no queues at all. And this is what we're going to change whenever we start up our application. I want a mic exchange and I want a mic queue. So let me create a new class for this. Let's organize the code by array uh, to begin with. So I'm going to create a rabbit. Um, Rabbit factory, rabbits. Yeah, let us just call it rabbit, rabbit 
Og Rapid Util, that's a good... Ah, okay, that's a bit bad. Okay, I'll, I'll name this Rapid uh, Util. I'm actually a bit against naming classes Util, but now I'm doing it anyway. So um, so this is um, our utility class. It, it should provide with us with two things. Uh, it should actually create a connection factory, and it should also initialize some code. That means that we want something to happen when we... Uh, when we uh, when we construct a new uh, yeah when, when we when we construct the, the rapid util then we need then we want some things to happen what we want to happen is we want to create a we want to have a private val um, uh, connection factory so that is what we want connection factory of course we don't want to recreate this every time connection factory we could also have made it static of course um, But let us just keep it. Uh, let us just keep it like this to begin with. So this is our connection factory, and then we are going to initialize it in our constructor. Connection factory from the Rabbit queue. Connection factory. We could also have created this connection factory with a one long URL, but I think this is a bit more explicit. So I'd actually like to define it like this: host equals localhost. I'm just going to duplicate the line. Port 5672. And oh, and that is of course an integer, as I remember. Isn't it an integer? Port int. Oh, that's an int. And then we have the then we have the what's its name? The V. The virtual hosts. Let us just look at documentation, right? So let me just look at the documentation so we can see how we should create it. We don't need to guess. Username, password, virtual hosts, host. So I've set these two already. I'm going to set the virtual host now. And then username and password, and we are happy. The virtual host, that's just the forward slash. Um, so we are using the default. Then we have the connection factory. Okay, it should have been factory. I'm going to refactor it afterwards. Username equals guest and password equals guest like this. So now we have created our connection factory. Let me just refactor it to factory like this. And um, so then it has been created. Then we also want We actually we, we don't want it to be private, but we could also create a method to actually to get it instead. That's a bit nicer, isn't it? So we are going to create a function here. So and I'm going to name this function uh, give me factory like this, and oh, and we are returning a connection factory like this. Return connection factory. So that is the code for that. Um, I also want. What else do I want? I want a. I actually want a static method. I don't know if I want to initialize some things. We could actually. Okay, let it now. Let us just let us create. Uh, what I want to do now, I want to create the exchange in the queue. I want to have a method for creating the default exchange and queue. So let us just name this default exchange and queue like this. And here we are going to use the factory first. Give me factory, and then we're going to create a new connection. New connection like this. Introduce new variable. Thank you very much. New connection. Here we need something called a channel, so we're going to create a new channel. And if this is going a little bit too fast, then read the documentation on uh, RabbitMQ's webpage. So this is my channel. We are doing exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, let me just show. So. So now we have created the, the connection factory. That was that part, um, and you can see here we could actually just have given it one, one long URI instead. We could uh, some could actually argue that this would be easier because it ta only takes one line. But I think it's a bit more explicit to say to mention all of the all of the properties. So here we have the here here uh, they're creating the channel. And then they also they are closing the channel and they are they are closing the connection. Let us also do that Let us, just so we remember to do it. So channel that close oh. close the channel and the new connection. Let us also close that close like this. And now we need to fill in some code so we can create the 
the exchange and the queue. And we can see here is the documentation. We can exchange, we can declare a new exchange like this. This is a direct exchange. It's very easy then, so it doesn't matter which um, the value of the routing key doesn't matter at all. And then we can create a, a queue and then we can bind them like this. I'm, I'm actually just going to copy this code right here. And it asked, it said, okay, this is Java. Should we convert this to Kotlin? And I said, thank you very much, IntelliJ. Very nice of you, exchange name. This is the mic exchange, like this. Type direct, durable, true. The queue name, I want to change this queue part right here because we want to create a new queue. Queue declare, declare. And here I would like to give some properties right here. I would like to ask markings. I would like to give the string. This is the mic queue. Right there, durable, true, exclusive, false. Ah, uh, what's, I don't know what exclusive. Auto delete, true. Um, and then an empty map, we don't have any extra. Um, oh, this is long, long string, I forgot to, to terminate the string. I'll just do that right there. Uh, empty map, like this. So now we're declaring the queue. Uh, mic exchange, my my queue, and then we need to bind them together. So, of course, I could I should have used variables. I know that um, queue, my queue. We can do that afterwards if we abort um, mic exchange. And then a routing key. The routing key just need to be present. It does not matter the value of the routing key. Um, uh, my key. I'll just name it that. So the, the it just need to be present. The value for this routing key it doesn't matter because it's it, it has the type direct as you can see right here. This is the exchange type direct. So we just uh, yeah. So it will just route it to that queue no matter what. And then we close the channel. We look close the connection, and we are happy again. So let us. So now we have this uh, connection factory right here. Rapid Util, it's a very ugly name, isn't it? Um, I'm going to rename it. I know it, it kind of does, doesn't matter. Let us call it Rapid Service. So this is my Rapid Service, right? And then I'll go into our application.kt and then uh, after defining the endpoints for the spaceship, then I want to create a new Rapid Service. And I want to they create the default exchange in queue like this. So then last thing I would like to do is I would like to hook into the endpoint. So whenever I post a spaceship like that, then uh, then I would like to create a message. So let us do that. So rapid service, we need rapid service. Give me factory like this, local variable. Oh. We do not need a local variable, we actually just need a new connection. Let us create a new connection. Uh, we could also keep, what did I say here? I just want a new connection. Okay. Uh, well, connection equals the connection right there. Then we have the connection, then I need to create a channel. Create channel like this. And the channel, we need that. So international variable, channel, thank you very much. Channel, right there. And basic publish, yes, thank you very much. Exchange name, that is the mic exchange that we are, we are publishing to. The next second one is the routing key, my key. And some properties, mm, I think I can leave this null actually. Let us try to do that. And then the, the by the way, and about here the by the way, we would like to send the spaceship that we received. So that is the my ship, and we want to convert this to a string, my ship to string. And then we need to convert this to a byte array like this. And I'm not giving any charge that I could have given it UTF-8 as the character set. But it doesn't matter right now. So these four lines here, they actually make sure that I sent the ship converted into a string um, and then to a byte array. Let us try to start the application and see if it works. Run. It started up. So when we started up, then we should actually now have a new exchange and a new queue. And we can see we actually got the new mic exchange right there. 
Let us look at the queues. Yes, now we have a queue. I'm so proud of myself already. Uh, another thing I uh, we need to do is we actually we need to curl a spaceship into this endpoint here. We want to post a spaceship right there. Last time I did it out in a console, and that was not uh, good because then people cannot uh, people cannot take that code. They need to write that themselves. So I'll create a new script right here, which is curl post spaceship like this dot shell script. Yes, added to Git, thank you very much. And I will, as usual, uh, commit all this code and push it to the repository. The repository will be the same as uh, the one yesterday. I'll place it in the, in the description. So let us curl. So we, we want to curl some something. We want to post some data. I just need to write minus D, then the, the post is also implicit right there. I don't need to write X post because when I say minus D, then it, that is per default post. And then I found out yesterday I used double quotes, but if I use single quotes instead, that's much better because then I don't need to then I don't need to escape all the double quotes inside my JSON right here. So we have a name. And this could be Mike, the spaceship right here, right here. Um, Mike's uh, spaceship. And then the fuel. Yes, then the fuel. How much fuel should we fill it with? 89, and this could also be a string, 89.3. Uh, Keta, uh, using JSON, uh, for a library named JSON, will then convert it also the string to a valid value, which is a float. The fuel is actually a float in our data model. So, but it, it's pretty smart. So, then we need a header. We found out yesterday that we actually need a header. The header that we need is content type colon application slash JSON. That, that is to tell our application that now we are now, now some, some JSON is coming. Uh, please uh, handle this and convert it to a data model. Then the last thing is the location where we're going to post this to. We're going to post this to localhost 8080 and spaceship like this. Let us see if it works. Press play, run the file. We got a valid return, so it looks like it works. Um, just for fun, I will I'll just write second spaceship and then we will change the fuel to maybe 69% instead. I just want, then I have two spaceships in, uh, created in, in, in the queue. So it looks, yeah, we got the receipts, so, and uh, there's, no, there's no errors in, our, in the console output. Let us go to the management module right here. We have the exchange right there. We have the queue right here. We can see we have two ready messages. This is very beautiful. I press the queue. I can get the message and then requeue it if I want to. Um, I actually just want to take the message and don't and don't requeue it. So that means that now that I'm taking the message, we can never read it again. So I got one spaceship right here. Here's the payload. Spaceship. I can zoom in a bit more. I like to zoom in when it's a success. So spaceship, mic, spaceship, and fuel 89.3%. Get message. My second spaceship and fuel 69.3%. I am so proud of myself. Look how easy it actually is. And uh, again, this RabbitMQ API, it is just, uh, it's brilliant. It's, I really like it. I'm going to, yeah, as I said, commit and upload all this code just as, uh, as I promised. Right after this, right after I'm done recording this video, uh, what's what's the one more thing I want to show? You? I just want to show you if when you use the Docker Compose, the image that I'm using right now, that is the Rabbit MQ colon management. If if you just take latest, then you don't get the management console. Um, uh, yeah, so right colon management, then you get the latest and greatest, but with the management included, with the management module included. So then we can actually uh, open up a browser and see what's going on. Thank you very much for watching. That was all for me tonight. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.